people looked into this subject more deeply, I'm sure it would be the experience of so many others, is that far from being the bastion of knowledge, most, and I mean most, academia is the pollution of intelligence because its range of thinking, its range of the possible is akin to the size of a P and I'm being optimistic. People say um, we must be sceptical. No, we mustn't. We must question. You see, there's such a difference between a sceptic and one who questions. Because one who questions, and people should question everything, including what I say, and see if it stands up. But one who questions is questioning in pursuit of the truth. A sceptic, like those very sad people in the sceptic societies around the world, their foundation from the start is that anything outside their pea-sized norm is not true. So their scepticism is not questioning if something's true, it's setting out from the start to try to convince people that it's not. And that, that is the mentality that infests and infects so much of what we call um, academia. And so we have this consensus between academics and politicians and journalists that somehow any any idea that there is a conspiracy must be nutty, must be dismissed by reflex action and, oh, let's cut and paste that, uh, what's that phrase again? Conspiracy theorist, that's it. He's a nutter, he's a conspiracy theorist. That's how it works. And so you have journalists who are so, again, infected by the arrogance of ignorance that they ridicule and dismiss those who are actually doing the job that they should be doing, but don't, as song sheet singers for the system. So let's just look for a second at the official definition of a conspiracy. A secret plan made by two or more people to do something that is harmful or illegal. Now, on that basis... How many conspiracies are there going on at all levels of society every day? The act of secretly planning to do something that is harmful or illegal. Weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that weren't. Classic. Now a conspiracy theory is officially defined as this. A theory that explains an event as being the result of a plot by a covert group or organisation. A belief that a particular unexplained event was caused by such a group. So people don't conspire in secret to bring about the end that they all desire. That doesn't happen. Apparently not. Two, definition of conspiracy theory. The idea that many important political events or economic and social trends are the products of secret plots that are largely unknown to the general public. How much does the general public know about what's going on in authority and government and the banking system and the corporations? How much do they know? I mean... It's almost, it's almost in mathematical terms, um, almost indescribable it's so small, the amount that the public know about what's really going on compared with what's going on in, in the shadows and the meetings. But no, it's all a myth. And 
So what we're being asked to believe, in effect, is that governments tell the truth and thus there can be no conspiracies by governments to manipulate events by telling lies to bring about an end they want. And what I love, you know, people talk about conspiracy theories, and these academics and journalists and politicians talk about conspiracy theorists. Do you, do you know, for me, the, the, the strangest people of all are the coincidence theorists. They're the ones, academics, journalists, politicians, great numbers still uh, members of the public, who think that all these connections, all these um, names that keep coming up, all these organisations that keep coming up across a great swathe of different areas, all this information uh, showing the connections between apparently unconnected people, organisations and events, is all a coincidence. I mean, I think that's a, a, a psychological flaw, you know. I think, it's a, I think it's a case of terminal naivety. Maybe the University of Kent should do a study. It'd be interesting. So, here we are in a situation where, for instance... War criminals like Tony Blair and boy George Bush and uh, all the people around them and behind them, the, where the real power is, told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Knowing there weren't, they lied through sexed up dossiers. They lied in public statements about the threat of Saddam Hussein because they wanted to invade Iraq because it was on the list of countries to be invaded, which included Libya, Syria, uh, etc. So it comes out, obviously, some of us conspiracy theorists said it before it came out, weapons of mass destruction is a joke. It comes out there weren't any. So there was, under any definition of conspiracy, there was a conspiracy to delude the public into supporting or not opposing the invasion of Iraq on grounds that were known by those that were selling them to be absolutely spurious. But then you say, or you hear, that any idea that there was a conspiracy over 9-11 is a conspiracy theory, and it, they're all mad. It's sobering to ponder on the following. Not just the same agencies, but the very same people who told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they knew they weren't, were the very same people that gave us the official story of 9-11. And what does it say about alleged journalists worldwide that despite what has been justified in horror and war, slaughter and suffering, on the basis of the official 9-11 story being true. Despite all that, despite the same people telling us that story, telling us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they weren't, I have come across yet no credible mainstream media investigation into whether that official story of 9-11 is true. Do you know, I... A kind of something to encapsulate mainstream journalists and politicians and what have you. I listened to an interview this week with uh, an investment banker. It was an investment banker who um, 
operated at, at a high level in the financial system. And it just shows you how the truth is kept from people, even in the system. That he was an investment banker working in global finance for a long time before he actually realised and grasped how money is created. The fact that money is created out of nothing, out of fresh air on computer screens by private banks, which gives them control of the entire financial system. And as those banks ultimately are controlled by the same network, it gives that network control over the whole financial system. If you go to my website um, on the home page, there's a, a, a video explanation of how money is created and the whole financial scam. Anyway, eventually, after years in the business at a high level, he realises, hey, how money is created. He realises the whole financial system is a scam. He then, with others, puts an event together where he's going to explain the whole financial scam and how money is created out of nothing by private banks. He sends invitations to 1,200 journalists and 179 politicians just to come and see the presentation. Not one single one of any of them replied and certainly did not turn up. And these are the people who are ridiculing in their arrogance of ignorance people who can see what they choose not to see. And so what we are seeing and will see more of are attempts to discredit conspiracy uh, researchers. We're now having Google, YouTube owned by Google, Facebook, even Twitter's coming into it now um, in terms of censoring information or um, un try trying to undermine the alternative media in many and various ways. We're having um, this right to be forgotten law extended, announced this very week, where um, people can be taken out of Google search engines in effect uh, because they've just asked to be taken out because they don't like what someone said about them. And what this is, this right to be forgotten, is simply a stepping stone towards George Orwell's memory hole, where information that the authorities don't want people to see just disappears. Um, Google, to extend uh, right to be forgotten uh, to all its domains uh, uh, accessed in the EU, it's EU law, Google will begin blocking search results across all its domains when a search takes place within Europe in an extension of how it implements the right to be forgotten ruling. The ruling allows EU residents to request the removal of search results that they feel link to outdated and irrelevant information, information they don't want people to see, um, about themselves on a country by country uh, uh, basis. And this is just the start. They'll want to extend this worldwide. You watch. And now, again, continuing this theme of linking, questioning the official story to terrorism, um, we have a, a, a situation where um, young people who question government or media may be extremists, officials tell parents, because you've got to get to the kids because they're the adults of tomorrow. You don't want them awake. Oh, my goodness, nightmare. Child protection officials uh, uh, have been uh, uh, criticised after warning parents that young people who take issue, I mean, wait for this, um, who take issue with government policy or question what they're told in the media may have been radicalised by extremists. A leaflet drawn up by the Inner City Child Safeguarding Board, I mean, how Orwellian is that? warns that, uh, by the way, to this Child Safeguarding Board have a branch in Westminster? If it doesn't, well, what's it doing? So the board warns that 
Appearing angry about government policies, especially foreign policies, is a sign specific to radicalization. So if you're angry about a government owned by the bankers imposing suffering, austerity and poverty on a vast number of people, you are becoming radicalized as an extremist. You see the constant connection in all these different areas. The same theme is being underlined all the time. Parents and carers have been advised by the Safeguarding Children Board in the London Borough of Camden that showing a mistrust of mainstream media reports and a belief in conspiracy theories could be a sign that children are being groomed by, ex uh, by uh, extremists. The leaflet says children who show a combination of these and other signs um, may be en route to emulating those who have been persuaded to leave the country in secret and against the wishes of their family, putting themselves in extreme danger as a result. You see how they're connecting, questioning all areas of the official story with extremists, especially extremists heading off to Syria. This is the, the psychological uh, mind game that's going on to get people to put the two together um, in their minds. Um, local safeguarding children boards are mandated by government all around the country under the Children's Act of uh, 2004. And we're going to see more and more of this because they, they want to shut down all questioning of anything outside the official norm. And that, as I've said in a recent video cast, is what political correctness is all about. The idiots, that, that, that extremists in uh, political correctness who, who seek to impose those, um, uh, those destroying um, uh, pressures on freedom of speech that make people frightened to speak their mind and speak their truth. They're just agents of government, but they have no idea that that's what they are because they're idiots. Bella Sankey, policy director of the campaign group um, Liberty, criticised the leaflet. Children should be encouraged to take an interest in politics and think critically about what they see in the media, uh, not deemed suspect for doing so. But that is the idea, to make that the case. And so, we have had um, kids at school um, reported to the authorities and the police for doing things like going to the UKIP website, which is an official political party fighting elections in this country, actually opposing the EU. Uh, what was this other one? An A-level student was reported to the police by his headmaster, to the police, for criticising the school in a blog. Uh, the um, student... Um, was apparently, according to the headmaster, developing into an anarchist. I wonder if I should report the headmaster for um, developing into an idiot. See, what we, what we have here is a very simple situation. Not every last fact, not every last claim that conspiracy, conspiracy researchers say um, about the world is 100% accurate. And there are those who, who um, say things that I shake my head about because there's nothing to support it. But the fact is, the great body of conspiracy research which is cross-referencing information and cross-referencing conclusions, is explaining why the world is, is as it is, why the few control the world, why we've reached a point now where 1% of the population owns uh, 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 around 50% of the wealth of the world, why this is not an accident, why this is not random, it's designed, it's a conspiracy. To bring this about. Just as there's a conspiracy, the same conspiracy, different face, to bring about a police state so the 1% can impose their will on the rest of the population. 
And when you are selling lies to try to uh, persuade the public that events are random when they're all going in a particular direction, you don't want them to see that. You want them to see dots, not pictures. When your whole foundation of what you want to achieve is based on lies, then of course what you have to do is suppress the sources telling the truth about what you're doing and exposing what you're doing. And that's what we're seeing now. And that's why this whole thing, with conspiracy theorists, is, um, is um, increasing all the time. And we're also seeing that more and more people are looking at these explanations and going, well, you know, they make more sense of the world than, than what, the, what the authorities have done in this. And this is why audiences for mainstream media um, organisations are falling, many like a stone. And the audience for the alternative media is increasing and increasing and increasing. It's not because people are getting crazier and crazier and crazier. It's, it's because they're awakening to, to what's really going on more and more. And you'll see... Um, these um, attacks on the alternative media, people like me and, and, and many others around the world, the alternative media in general, you'll see them increasing. See, in terms of my case, they have tried for years and years and years to dismiss me and um, discredit me through ridicule. That oh, it's mad. Um, but it hasn't worked. It's worked with people that, that will believe anything and don't read what someone's saying so they can see with their own mind but with intelligent people more and more and more truly intelligent people not academically intelligent people as they claim which is not really intelligence most of it it's cleverness which is very different uh, remembering facts is cleverness intelligence is making sense of those facts um, and actually seeing that many of the facts aren't facts at all so they're trying to ridicule me, but more and more people are um, looking at, at, at what I'm doing anyway. I'm just about to start a world tour. I'm just talking to thousands, thousands, thousands of people all over the world, literally all over the world. So the ridicule has not worked. So what you'll see, and it will be the case in the, with the alternative media in general, is it will turn to hostility and to um, antagonism and condemnation and all that stuff and 